Thank you. Bad hat. Oh, Santa Claus. We are heading towards Grand Island today. Gonna get in some uh, time, hopefully, at the range there. There's a public range, archery range. It's also like a shooting uh, facility. Uh, I've never been to the archery part of it. I don't know how, uh, how demanding they are with the archery part of it. I'm gonna go down there and check it out. It says 3D, uh, they have a uh, short range and a long range. It's $20 for unlimited access. And uh, the short, of course, is... Uh, so I'm assuming since it's $11 for the short course and $20 for the long course, that would probably indicate to me that it's... Uh, that it means that there's quite a few more targets in the long course. So I think I might try and make this a little habit of uh, getting out and trying different archery courses throughout Nebraska and other areas, maybe whatever they got. I'm gonna shoot. Here they have all their uh, trap uh, stations. It's really cool. Got a group down there working. Here's the clubhouse. That much down here, there's only three bags, so the uh, actual 3D course is not up right now. So I was kind of afraid of being in wintertime still kind of snowy. So we'll just uh, we'll go down there and think around on the targets, the bags. All right. Yeah, we're the only ones out here today. We got four bags out there. Eighty, sixty, forty, twenty. Let's go to the sixty first and see how we do there. So that's sixty there. Time to go distant. All right, we're gonna shoot that 80. We're gonna go for the top. Top blue, middle. Top blue, middle. Hey, that's look good. I was off to the right, like I said, though, but 80 yards at those little dots. I'll take that. That's a pie plate.
There you can see it. Writing letters in the sand. So, put my fingers in the ground. Shoot right here. I knew I was a little bit right, but we have a, we have a little bit of a wind coming across, a little breeze. And it's, it's not a lot, but probably enough to push that little bit. But we're still within six inches of each other. like these uh, little covers they have over the top of these. Works really well to keep the right there. Try to count to 10. Hold on your target for a 10 count. That'll help you ease your nerves. Keep you from jumping that string. Give you time to relax and think about your shot. Mechanics instead of trying to keep that pin on the target. Top one, two by four on the back, ate my arrow. Like I said, they didn't have the uh, 3D set up, so we weren't able to do that today, but we got a little time in. Nice little area out here. Uh, get the 3D up. I'm not even sure what they do for 3D out here. If it's just in this uh, grass area or if it's in a tree line somewhere, I have no idea. If you want to come out and shoot your pistols or rifles or whatever, or your bow, you can do it out here. It costs you a little bit of money, but I think this was seven dollars for me to to shoot on their practice range. So this here is my old stomping grounds. This is where I started hunting. Remember I used to walk down that uh, side there. Shot my first turkey right out here. There's a little creek bottom that runs all the way around there. I thought they tore all these trees out, but I guess they didn't. This is all different here. This used to be a field. I'm not sure what they're doing with it now. Somebody must have bought this um, 
doing their own thing with it. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, there used to be a field here and another shelter belt. I always walk down this uh, walk down this fence line to get to my stand. I had one tree that uh, I used to use. Saw my biggest buck ever out of that tree. See all the cover in here for them, which is good. I'm glad to see they're still still leaving this for the animals to hide in. A shelter belt, that shelter belt ran all the way across here. It was all private. And a lot of those deer would funnel through there and then go to the ordinance plant across over to here. I remember this big old tree, man. There's a stand in there right now. Man, this brings back memories. Home personal little playground. Got some stories for you from this area. I remember having to cross this all the time. If if I came in that back side, hopefully it's solid. Nice little stick here. Take it nice and easy. That's that little bottom that I was talking about, so it would wind down through here. And then those deer walk this back and forth through here. All right, so anyway, this is where, this is where I used to hunt. This is where I uh, started out being a city boy. It was one of my favorite places to come. It was kind of off from the other area, about three or four miles, kind of just this corner mile section, half mile. And uh, he used to come out here all the time and dove hunt. There was even a lot of turkeys out here at one time. I shot my first turkey out here too, stalked it. Billy crawled about 100 yards to him and, and shot him with the shotgun. But um, this here behind me is actually a stand here now. Put out one of these trees here. I had my stand up when I started. And uh, one of the hunts I remember the most it wasn't even actually a hunt. It was uh, the day before the season started. And I was coming out here to scout. <laughs> um, but anyway, this was a this was like a winter wheat field right here. It was kind of like a quarter. And uh, this buck jumped the fence on the other side by the orange plant. There used to be a huge shelter belt that ran all the way through here. And uh, he jumped that fence and he started walking across and this this deer it was a mule deer and we used to have mule deer and uh white tails and then there used to be some inbreeding some uh some uh mix in here too but uh this particular day this was a purebred muley and uh i'll never forget him because he uh <laughs> he was a smart smart cat he jumped that fence and he walked about 10 paces and he lay down. And the alfalfa or winter weed, whatever it was, was only about maybe a, a two foot tall. Uh, whatever it was, it was it was tall enough that he could lay down and he would, I mean, he was probably a good 180 inches. And he laid down and he sat there for about five or 10 minutes and then he'd get up and he'd walk another 10 or 12 paces and he'd lay down. He did that all the way across that field. When he reached this side, I remember I was just shaking and I was just shaking. I, I'll never forget it. But I was out in the in the flipping open on one of these trees. You know, you can see pretty well from this side. And uh, the ducks pintails. Um, he came over that fence and he walked directly to one of these evergreens off the side of me and disappeared, just gone. Never saw him again. And it was the craziest thing, but that was one of the biggest deer that I had ever seen. 
So that was a, a really good experience. I've had a lot of a lot of my greatest experiences happen in the first year or two that I started hunting. A lot of lessons were learned. Uh, another great uh, memory I had in this particular stand was uh, I was up here sitting and uh, just upset because there was a guy that came in on the on the west side here and he was pheasant hunting and he had his dog and he was just running back and forth through here and he walked right through here came right under me and just walked down that creek bottom and I was so distraught because I, I you know it was a perfect day it was one of those days where you're just like oh this is gonna be the perfect day and uh once he passed me, he went down that creek, kept going, and I got upset. I got upset, lowered my bow down, climbed out of the tree, grabbed my bow, and I turned around. And standing at about 20 yards from me, looking at me, was about a, I'd say a 130, 140 inch whitetail. And I just, I was in awe. I just, I couldn't believe that that deer was standing there looking at me after that guy had just walked through with his dog and pheasant hunting. But that day was a, a really good lesson for me because especially on public land, you get a lot of pressure out there. But uh, ever since that day, I've never gotten discouraged when I see people walk through. I actually invite it because a lot of times you'll see those deer circle and come back in the back way on them or they'll go around them and come right up the same trail that those people walked so uh let that be a lesson for you guys you new guys that uh are just getting started there was a uh bedded doe over there in in one of the other fields and i had gotten off into that creek bottom and it was in there and she laid down and she had that uh, nice buck with her and I stalked in and uh boy the geese are lousy today oh. I had glassed a, a dose sitting out in the middle of the field and she had a buck with her and they were they were bedded out in that field so I got down and I went to that edge, to that creek that we crossed earlier. earlier. And I started uh, started to call. I really didn't have a clue what I was doing at that time, but seen it work on shows like Primos and things like that, so I started calling. And got their attention. Well, he pegged me right away, but uh, he stood up and he took off running. Now the doe stayed, she stayed laid down. She just stayed right there. That buck was gonna come back to her. So I was getting pretty anxious because where I was sitting uh, behind an evergreen tree, he had ran down the, the line and I knew he was coming back. And if he came back that same route, he was gonna give me about a 20 or 30 yard shot. Had a fence out in front of me, the, the border. He walked that fence and he got behind an evergreen tree and right when he got behind that evergreen tree, I drew back. And uh, when he crossed in front of me, I stopped him and I shot right. I hit the fence line and skipped it right over his back. One of the most beautiful deer I've ever seen, still to this day. He was uh, a heavy, Four by four, chocolate, horned, I mean, just absolutely chocolate like a uh, elk with ivory white tips on every tip. Just absolutely gorgeous and a stud. I would say that deer was probably in the 130s. Uh, for around here, you know, he was, he was a decent buck. So I would have been ecstatic to have that be my first buck taken with a bow, but yeah, this is the old area. Thanks for joining me here on Public Side Outdoors, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Stay safe out there in your hunt, everybody.